Hello, my wood-turning family, and welcome once again to another episode of The Naked Turner. Today I'm going to be turning some simple um, segmented pieces, but they're based on nine. These have nine sides, and the reason I'm doing nine is because nine is a very powerful number uh, inside of a circle. Um, it also fools the eye a bit at times because you're looking for patterns of twos, fours, sixes, eights, twelves, and the nine throws in a kind of unique, um, uh, a unique wobble in the vessel. And because of that, I really like it. So I'm going to be showing you that process. I'm doing it out of some just plain kiln dried dug fir, and I'm hoping I get an interesting look out of it. I'm going to start off today on this episode by just showing you some of the glue up process. All right, so here's my pieces of uh, dug fir. These are pieces that are about an inch and a quarter thick, and they're approximately an uh, inch and three-eighths or so across this outer edge, uh, or the cord of this particular circumference. So um, what I'm going to do is start by sticking these pieces that I cut on the table saw using a miter sled designed for cutting nine-sided objects. Uh, and that I did uh, at a shop space, not here, at my own space, just because it was easier for me. So I'm going to stick this down on the tape like so, and then I'm going to keep doing that and sticking the next one in line down, and so on, all the way around this circle. And I've uh, lined them up as best I could as far as the way they fit together really nicely. And this particular jig that I have for cutting, um, for cutting these is actually a miter, uh, a miter gauge that I can set to different settings. And it cuts extremely accurately considering uh, that there is still a human involved in the cutting process. Okay, so that's going around like that. I'm going to keep sticking these down, and then I'll start applying. Okay, so I have a piece of plexiglass down here with uh, a fairly smooth surface. That's just a, sort of a nice um, thing to do this on for me to avoid getting too much uh, glue on something else that I don't want to get it on. And the glue will come off of this plexiglass relatively easy once it's fully cured. So now I'm going to get ready to glue this strip up. And then we'll wrap it together, put a few rubber bands around it, and let it. Okay. Uh, on this particular one, I'm going to be using some waterproof, uh, Ultimate Wood Glue Waterproof Superior Tight Bond 3. And uh, this stuff's pretty amazing. So I have a. Uh, oop, let's get this flowing a little. Tongue depressor here. I'm going to put a little on both faces, smooth it on, and I just like to do both faces to make sure I'm getting enough, uh, and also coating the capillary ends with some moisture there, and getting all the way down in. Alright, so I'm putting the glue on all of these uh, segments, making sure I get plenty of glue. I would rather have more than less, just to make sure everything sticks together well. Alright, once it's all together, I make sure the pieces are flat, and then... I'm running this at 16 times speed and I'm gluing up the next series of segments in order to make up the second ring. Once I have it all glued up, I rubber band it and make sure it's all flat. All right, so just to make sure after getting all those rubber bands on, I went and put a band clamp around this one. And then on this one, I just did a series of regular clamps to uh, make sure those joints stay nice and tight. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to put my face plate on this first one so that I can turn a mortise in the bottom of this. And I've used my, my caliper 
with the stick out here and gone around each side and set this to try to get it as centered as possible. So I have it pretty well centered. I'll screw it down and uh, then stick it on my lathe and surface off the uh, what will become the foot of this vessel. All right, I'm getting ready to surface off the foot. Okay, so this is the next ring that I'm going to put on here, and it's going to go staggering the joints. Um, I sanded it flat. Now I'm just checking it for a fit to see how good it is, and uh, it looks real nice. I got a nice fit. So what I'll do is glue this up and then use a pressure block to pressurize it here against this using my tailstock. And uh, that's what I'm going to start on next. Okay, so now what I've done is lined it up the way I want to have it lined up. I've made an indicator mark and uh, I will glue this up. I want, but first what I want to do is make a mark on the other side and put some hot glue on it. Um, once, the, once the wood glue is on, I'll put a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place and then pinch it between my headstock and my tailstock. As a clamp. Okay, so now I have it flipped over. I've made a mark, pencil line all the way around, and made two indicator marks just showing how I want this to go back on here. And now what I'll do is glue that up, and then I'll use some hot glue to attach it to here with just a couple dabs, and then quickly put it in my uh, Put it on my lathe and pressurize it with a pr uh, pressure block from the tail end. Here I have it pinched in, centered up as best as I can, and uh, pressurized with my tailstock. I'll let this dry up for a few hours at least, maybe four hours, and then uh, see what I end up getting. It's a warm day today, so it should dry relatively quickly. Okay, so there it is glued up and uh, it's been a few hours now the glue feels like it's holding real well and I've surfaced this face off and now this time because I'm about just a tiny bit out of center not necessarily here but on these outer edges then you can see it a little bit in there too I'm actually going to take the time now to hollow out the little to show me exactly where center line and square off or um, round off the outer edges. Turning up the speed. I'm removing excess material with my 5 8 PNN bowl gouge. Just truing this piece up outside and now inside. Okay, so I have all these one, two, three, four rings, and then one more ring. Uh, those four that are right there, so I have two that are on the lathe, then I have these four, that's six, and then that one there, that's seven rings. This one ring right here is a little different, and it's a uh, sapele, or sapile, and I'm going to uh, see if I can stick that one in there as well. That's one I made a while ago out of some leftover uh, segments I had cut for the gear bowl that I made. So those were left over from that. And uh, right now I'm going to start working on gluing up that ring right there. So let's get started on that. All right, I'm gluing up the next series of segments to create ring number three. All right, here's the next one, all glued up, and I'll let that sit for a few hours and uh, pull it out of the clamps. Okay, so while I have that other piece <coughs> gluing up or drying up, 
um, I'm going to just kind of blend these two edges together a little bit here. Okay, here I'm taking and uh, refining the back side of the bowl as it meets the foot. And later on in this video, you'll get to see uh, something interesting about the foot that I had on this bowl. Okay, so I have the uh, next ring here positioned. And I sanded it down nice and flat. I'm getting ready. I made my a uh, cursor here to show where it wants to go back on and then I outlined the whole outer edge and that centers it pretty well on this uh, piece that I've already those two rings that I've already glued up and turned down so now I'll glue that up and uh, pressure block it once again between my tailstock and my headstock okay now because of the fact that the face of this has not been uh, trued off. I put a um, pad in here to spread the pressure out a little bit and uh, it's squeezing the glue out nicely all the way around. So now I'll let this sit up and since uh, it's already late afternoon I just got home from work I'll leave this glued up until tomorrow and then I'll turn it down. And put the next layer on. All right, so I have another series of rings on here, and I did decide to put uh, this sapile um, sapile ring on there as well. So now you can see I added one more Doug fur ring, and then this sapile ring. So now what I'm going to do to surface this sapile off and get rid of the uh, edges. Okay, I have ring number four on here, which is the sapile ring, and I'm going to be surfacing it and then taking and uh, flattening it off with some sandpaper, checking it to make sure it's flat, and now removing the outside facets and blending it into the last ring. Okay, I'm actually going to turn this inner edge down as well. There we go. Now I got rid of the glue marks there. All right. Most of them, anyway. Still a little bit more right Removing here, but more material I'm going to hold off at this point. On the That's a good start. Just kind of doing one continuous. All right, spin. and here's another ring glued up. That'll be the next ring. And uh, let that dry up, and then tomorrow I will glue that onto the face of that sapile ring. And uh, that'll take me up to five rings then I'll have two more rings to do all right so I've got the next ring on here now and uh, it's nice and centered I'm gonna just surface surface this off and then get rid of the edges put my safety gear on and uh, here we go. Nice and flat already, and it's very close to being perfectly centered. So, first thing I'll do is. Alright, so now I have the last ring glued up. Bowl scraper 
and sanding pad to flatten and it's right here. this next ring out. Now I'm and this last ring to remove the outer edge measures remove the inner edge approximately well. 14 and 3 quarters of an inch across. So this will most likely end up being about a 14 inch uh, bowl. And that ring, as well as this last ring, I just glued up here. And you can see I employed the same technique where I took and uh, placed the piece, made a tracing around it in pencil, and then made an indicator mark and center line marks for the centers lining up with the last segment. And then I hot glued a series of spots to clamp it so that the uh, the glue would not slide around because once you put the glue on, as I'm sure you know when you're doing segmenting, those blocks will tend to slide around when you go to, to uh, clamp them up. So this keeps it from slip sliding around and keeps you on your registration marks. But there it is. Uh, later on this afternoon, this will be glued up. Probably in about two, two and a half hours, I'll come back out here, relieve the pressure block, and then take and glue, surface this ring off. Um, and actually surface this ring off as well, take this one and sand it on the stationary sander, and then do the same process, and that'll be the last ring. All right, hola familia. I have this segment up, and uh, I'm going to surface this surface off. It's pretty close to being perfectly flat already, but I'll do a little surfacing and sanding on it, and then I'll hollow the inside and round the outside. Don't forget, family, wood turning family, that you always want to have your safety gear on when you're turning. And I'm going to start out with my half inch by half inch heavy duty scraper made by Sorby, Robert Sorby Tools. And Bring this up to right around 1260 RPM. And you can hear it hopping around a little. All right, now I'll be rounding that inside edge off. Coming into about here, and surfacing this ring, sanding it, getting it nice and flat. And now I'll do the same thing, remove the outer edge. and deep. All right, I'm leaving all this here. Eventually I'll be taking a lot of that inside off, I have a feeling. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, so next thing to do is to, uh, I'm going to take this next circle and I will surface it off on this side um, on my stationary sander. And then that'll get glued on here, clamped up. That'll be the last level. All right, so after quite a bit of segmenting um, of this dug fur and the one ring that I had already done of sapile, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings. And uh, they're made up of nine segments per ring. So I'm gonna start turning this now and uh, seeing what kind of shape I get come up with. 
I didn't do any real mathematics on this as far as individual sizes. I just gave myself plenty of overlap. I'm going to try to do a fairly wide upper lip that then coves down into the bowl. So we'll see what happens. Um, I think what I'd like to do with this is maybe bring my tailstock in for a little while while I'm forming this outer edge. Uh, but I'll see how it feels. It does have a little bit of vibration to it. So I may want to put a uh, pressure block on here so that I get a little less wobble out of this. But first, I'm going to get rid of the little glue bumps and uh, just kind of face this off. This glue has been setting up for about two and a half to three hours now, and I'm hoping it's on there pretty good. So I'll give it a try. All right, so what I did is I cut a piece of one by uh, two and put it in here across this particular lower level. Um, I didn't do it on the top level because I'm trying to flatten this out and then also uh, turn this into round. Um, so, or at least I think I'm going to turn it into round. First I'm going to flatten it. All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to start shaping my half inch some of these inch heavy duty Robert kind of blending them together as a bowl. The surface this bowl, the last segment or the last ring of this bowl. Like fur. Now I'm getting some splintering. So I'm going to work some blocks around and true up the outer edge. I'm okay. Removing material with my now I got my uh, gouge P and N bowl gouge here, and I don't sharpen it up a little bit more. This Doug Fur was putting out so many screaming that he decided to cut down the line with his gloves. All right, now I'm coming in and removing material to start making the shape on the back side. Of it. All right, so I'm putting a little sanding sealer on it now. And then I'll uh, do a little bit of wet sanding after this. This is the second coat here. I want to get this stuff coated pretty well because um, this Doug fur is going to suck it up. It was extremely dry. All right. Okay. I'll let that dry up. That sapile is just beautiful in there. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to get in here. Start hollowing out this first layer, and I'll remove that pressure stick, and uh, hopefully this thing will still stay on here nice. I don't want to put too much pressure on that because I don't want to blow these glue joints out. All right, 
and right about there. We'll be good. All right, turning up the speed. Okay, I'm running right around a thousand RPM right here. Okay, I want to. Okay, I have a pressure block in there now, and I have just a little bit of pressure on that. There we go. It's actually a little out of center. It's making me wobble a little. Okay. I have a pressure block in there, and there's still a tiny little bit of a wobble, but it's pretty darn good, so... I'm going to go with it here. All right, so unfortunately, right after my battery died, um, my bowl, the foot on my bowl flew apart, busted off here, which I was a little worried about. And uh, even though I had the pressure block in there, it still busted my mortise off. I should have probably just had a glue block on the bottom of this. That would have been the smart thing to do. Um, that would have been the smart thing to do. And, uh, I don't know if you can see this, really I think I was just out of frame. But anyway, this busted, everywhere, uh, the mortise on this busted off. And so now what I just did is took my Japanese pull saw and went around right at that line and cut this bottom away. Then what I will do is I will endeavor to flatten this out nice and flat. Then I'm taking two pieces here that I have I'm taking uh, these two pieces here of um, sapile and I've oriented them on the bias to each other and then what I'm gonna do is take and put this on there glue this turn it make a new mortise put it on here and I'm hoping that with this stuff my mortise will hold up a little bit better but um, anyway it was a very unfortunate mishap that uh, when this flew off it also did some damage here to the outer rim so I'll have to turn this down like another three-eighths of an inch or so on each side here and then I got a ding here and in here too from that pressure block that I had inside of there as it flung out of the way but um, hopefully I will be able to salvage this I think I will uh, I've got a nice clean cut here just have to sand all this down now and I think we'll be in business so anyway that's what's going on sorry you missed it it would have been fun to see on camera all right so I got it sanded down so like I showed you I took and pull sawed this just a little bit above the uh, glue joint and I came back here with a block sander sanded it off until I'm just through the glue. Alright, so I got rid of the old layer of wood and now I can see all these blocks coming through and all the glue joint, the vertical glue joints. Um, <clears throat> so now that that's done, I can wait for this block here to, uh, to actually dry up and then what I'll do is cut it into a rough circle and um, stick it on my lathe, turn mortise on it, 
and then see if I can align this bowl on that. Um, something like that anyway. We'll see how I do it. I may end up... Okay, so I have these two pieces of sapile on the bottom here. I'm going to leave them extra large for now so that my mortise is not too close to the edges. And I'm using my, um, my tool rest here as I spin it around to try to get it as close to perfectly centered as possible. And I can see right here, okay, that's about it. That's as close as I'm going to be able to get this piece. Alright, so I was able to glue a new base on. I do have a little bit of a wobble here, which is unfortunate. But uh, I'm going to try to true this back up as best I can. Get some light on here. So yeah, I'm going to true up the outside edge to get rid of this splinter. And then go about shaping the inside here. Hopefully uh, it doesn't fly off again. All right, my battery uh, died on me there. Coming in here, and I sharpened up this uh, gouge here, and I don't even know what the name on this, what the name is on this, but I'm spinning up around 1300 RPM, and I'm gonna try to screw this up. very carefully using my one of my bowl gouges to try to true up the outer edge get rid of the damage that was created when the bowl flew off okay and now a little bit of all the way through the inner edge of the bowl creating a nice, a nice sweep. all right i switched over to my little robust tool rest and my robert Sobey scraper and i'm scraping away very carefully trying to avoid any vibration. All right, getting ready to put some sanding sealer on here. Let's get a little light on the subject. All right, so um, I finished it. Here it is. Turned out really nice. Finished bottom. I'm a little dusty right now, as you can see. I got a lot of stuff on me, but I'll give this one last uh, buff down. But uh, there it is, finished product. Um, this was a challenge. But it didn't beat me. I was able to After rise above this and find sealer, a way to get it done. Wet sanding um, oil. Always be creative about uh, ways of going about fixing things. Don't just give up on something. Give it a try. See if you can come up with some way now to I'm, solve a problem. Uh, come up with a solution. And, and you might end up with something that looks pretty good. Here I am refining the foot and getting ready to uh, part this and then cut it with my Japanese pull saw to remove it from the uh, waste block piece of sapile.